Good morning, everybody. Silas back again today. It is just absolutely beautiful out here. I know I've been starting a lot of my vlogs with beautiful here lately, but man, it just keeps getting better and better and better. Every day seems to be better than the last one. They are saying snow coming in next week, so that'll kind of ruin that. But today, it's just really nice. In fact, as soon as I start doing anything, I'm going to have to shed this coat because it's just going to be way too warm for that. Today is the day I'm going to start working on these wheels. I don't have anything else going on today that I know of. So I'm going to go through here and start chucking these out in the road. Then I have to go through with my handy dandy pair of channel locks here and pop all the lug nuts off. Not the lug nuts, why did I say that? I got to pop all the wheel weights off and all the valve stems. That way they're actually clean aluminum. I can't send any semi wheels like I said in my previous log and I can't send any chrome wheels if they're chrome plated, which I don't see any chrome plated ones in here. So that's good. But if they have a little bit of paint like that one there, that won't hurt anything. Of course, it has a tire on it, so it doesn't matter anyway. But I'm going to go through here. I'm probably going to start actually on the other side of the pile and throw those out first because I've got a whole bunch of truck beds that are full of wheels with tires on them still that I need to dump out. And I don't have anywhere to dump those without burying these wheels. So it's kind of one of those situations, once again, where I've got to do five things to be able to do five other things. But I want to get started on this so you guys can hang out and watch me work for a little bit. Like a dummy, I went off. And left my tripod out at the other place. I was recording loading up that old Dodge camper and I left it sitting there so hopefully it's still there because that's right next to the street. <laughs> Somebody may have got themselves a nice free tripod. If it's gone not a big deal they're only like 16 or 17 dollars. I'll just order another one. There we go. Got a good number of them down. There's probably two truck beds full here. That'd be good. I'm not sure how many truck beds it's going to take to fill that dumpster. It's probably going to take at least 20. I'm going to guess 15 to 20. So I got a long ways to go yet. This is just scratching the surface. Those there are all clean, ready to go. The ones I threw out over here, and I've got just a few over there that I have to clean real quick. So I'll show you guys how I do that. The main thing I need to do on these is get the wheel weights off of them because lead and zinc will melt in with the aluminum and ruin it. So those have to come off. The steel ones don't really hurt anything, but I just pull them all off anyway just to make them happy. This in here is a lead weight. I can tell just by looking at them anymore whether they're lead, zinc, or steel. They're pretty easy to tell apart once you learn it. I'll show you guys the other ones here in a minute, but I'll show you how I take them off first. They sell tools that are made for taking these off, and I've actually got them somewhere, but I found half the time it's easier just to use channel locks because I have to use these to pull the valve stems anyway, so while I have them in my hand, I might as well just go ahead and pull everything off. So I can do this looking at the camera and what I'm doing. Normally I can do this a lot faster. I'm trying to watch to make sure I'm doing doing it right on the camera at the same time. Like that. You just snag into that little opening right there with the channel lock so I get it to focus. And you just squeeze it and it peels right off of there. Comes right off almost every time, especially when you aren't trying to hold a camera and film while you do it. Let's see if I can do this one a little bit better. Nope. Trying to do this one-handed is a little bit of a challenge because I keep dropping the channel locks. There, just like that. And then the valve stem, what you do on that is you take the pliers like this, you put them in like this, and you just grab it tight like that down as far as you can, and you just pull back like that. And it snaps it off at the base like that. That there can actually go in the dirty brass. Then you roll the wheel up like that, and then you kind of turn them sideways, and you just pinch it like that, and it pops right out. Every now and then, the valve stem will snap in the middle somewhere. It'll snap in half on you, and if that happens, you can either take a razor blade and cut them off on the back side, or those aren't that big of a deal, especially if you've already removed most of it. I just leave them in there and throw them on in the bucket. These are all the lead weights I've pulled off so far. They've got the stick-on kind and the rim clamp kind. And if you can't tell just by looking at them what they are, if you take a pair of, even these channel locks would work, and you grab them, and you squeeze, 
they're really soft and the teeth just sink right into them. Steel and zinc won't do that. Now zinc will to some degree, it's just not as soft. I haven't seen any zinc wheel weights yet, so if I find some of those I'll show you. But here's a steel weight. This one's actually got a plastic coating on it, so those are really obvious. Whenever you see that plastic coating, you know it's a steel weight, so you don't have to worry about it. This one's on a tire, so I'm not going to pull it off. But I just want to show you most steel weights, other than the ones that have the plastic on them. The ones that have the plastic won't be marked, but all the ones that don't have plastic will be marked FE. You can see right there, it's kind of faint, but it says FE, and that's the symbol for iron. So if you see FE on them, you know they're steel, and you know you just throw them in the scrap. Check that out. That thing must have been way out of balance. They've got three layers deep of stick-on wheel weights. I've never seen that before, and that's a lot of weight. They th should have just thrown that wheel in the garbage, put a new wheel on it, because that wheel has to be warped or something to be that bad. Well, I was trying to find a zinc wheel weight to show you guys real quick, but I can't seem to find any. They're not that rare. Usually, when you're doing wheel weights, now, all new wheel weights, not all, but most new wheel weights are steel. The ones they make now, because lead is considered hazardous, as you know, and they don't want it in the environment. And a lot of times these things don't get pulled off and they get shredded or they get smelted or whatever. And then the lead fumes go in the air and then they rain in the ocean. So just bad news. So they try not to use lead much anymore. A lot of these are older though. So a lot of these still have the lead wheel weights on them. So if you go to a modern tire shop that's dealing in modern stuff, usually at least half of your weight is going to be steel wheel weights. And then about a fourth is going to be lead and then about a fourth is going to be zinc. For whatever reason, I can't seem to find any zinc. All I can find is steel and lead. So I'll keep looking around for a minute. I am absolutely blown away. I can't find any zinc wheel weights. Like, I'm determined to find one because I want to show you guys what they look like. They're easy to identify as soon as you find one, but I can't seem to find one anywhere. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about frustrating. Right here is where I started when I first started trying to find a, a zinc wheel weight. And I went all the way up, all the way around this entire pile looking. And I finally was like, I give up. I'll just show them I have some up front. I'll get one of those out later and show it to them. I come down here and right next to where I start, I find one. So <laughs> I guess I just wasted the last 20 minutes. But anyway, now that I'm out of breath, right here's how you tell. See where it says ZN? That stands for zinc. That's the symbol for zinc. So super easy to tell if it says ZN or FE. It's junk. Although these zinc wheel weights, they do sell, just not for nearly, nearly as much as the lead wheel weights. Lead wheel weights I can usually get a dollar a pound out of if I separate them. Whereas zinc, you're looking at more like 25 cents a pound. And then steel obviously just go in the car for 11 cents a pound. If you're selling wheel weights to people that make bullets and uh, fishing weights and that sort of stuff, you have to, have to, have to separate out those zinc wheel weights because they will melt right in with the lead. They have a very similar melting temperature. I think it's a tiny bit higher than lead, but they'll melt right together when you put them in the, the, uh, the smelter. And so you don't want to do that because zinc is much harder than lead and it will ruin the bullets and the, the uh, fishing weights and that sort of stuff, it'll make them hard to use. Now one probably won't hurt anything, but if you mix in too many, it'll really mess it up. Back in the day, I'd go places like tire shops and whatnot, and I'd buy their wheel weights, just unsearched, whatever buckets they got, and I'd give them 50 cents a pound for them, and I'd take them and I could put them on eBay and sell them for, you know, 90 cents or so, unsearched, just wheel weights. But now lead, I mean not lead, steel wheel weights are getting to be so common, that's what most of them are from the new ones, that they don't want to do that anymore. The other day, a guy brought me uh, three buckets of them. I say the other day, it's been about four or five months ago now, but he brought me three buckets of wheel weights. They weighed about 80 pounds a piece. And I went through and sorted all three buckets. And when it was all said and done, I had about 50 pounds of lead and the rest of it was all steel and zinc. And so that's just a, a huge drop off right there. What is that? That's uh, 80 times three is 240. So 50 pounds out of 240 pounds. And that's not even a fourth of them were lead. And that's about typical. So anymore, most people won't even buy lead wheel weights unless you search them. If you want to sell them unsearched, they usually give like 10 cents a pound. They buy them for steel, and then they separate the lead out themselves. But like I was saying, if you separate them out yourself, you can get about a dollar a pound out of them. Uh, if you melt them down yourself, and you do all the work, and you put them in nice clean ingots, you can get even more than that out of them. However, that's a lot of time-consuming work, and you got to be really careful what you do it. You've got to do it outside because lead fumes will kill you. And you got to be really careful. It's not worth it to me. I've done it in the past. I know how to do it. I, uh, I've melted a bunch of them down. I've melted hundreds and hundreds of pounds of lead over the years. But I don't do it anymore. I just sell it like it is. This is going to be a really good mix, though, once I finally do get around to dismounting all these. Most of these are lead. I'd say probably about 80% of the ones I saw today are lead weights. And the rest of them are mostly steel. And it, that's still the only zinc weight I've found. Whew, it reeks like a skunk over here again. I think I made it mad. 
throwing all these wheels out. I don't know where it's at, but it's got to be under underneath one of these cars right in this area because it stinks over here. But I'm going to get back to work. I've got four more there to clean, and I think I've got about six of them over there to clean real quick. And then I'll be done in this little area. And there we go. I got this batch all done. I always recommend if you're doing this type of work all day long, now if you're just doing it a few wheels here or there, this won't matter to you. But if you're doing this all day long, you want to alternate between dismounting tires. You want to clean a few and then stack a few because if you don't, going like this, if you just get all your wheels dismounted and you put them in a pile and then you go through and just start cleaning them all, from going like this all day, your hand will hurt so bad at the end of the day. You won't be able to move your hand for a week. So I always recommend you kind of alternate it up, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, that way you don't kill your hand. It's hard for me to get anything done because every time I climb up there and start throwing them down again, somebody comes in with something. Had a guy here with some converters, not a big deal, I ran out there, got those real quick. I get back in here, climb to the top of the pile, somebody else calls and they're here to pick up a check. So I climb back down, do that, come back in here and then somebody else calls. So it's just never ending cycle of up and down the mountain. That's okay, we'll get it done eventually. I got a bunch more thrown out. I haven't had a chance to clean any of these yet, but we're getting quite a few yet. I still have all of this here yet to do, plus the whole other side along the road. So there's gonna be quite a few more wheels to get out of here yet. But we're gonna take a break from this. Skyler's on his way in with a cool old truck. One from out where those other three I had once before that he hauled in for me together. There's a 51 and a couple late 40s. He went back out there and a guy had another one and I haven't actually seen it. I'm told that it runs. I don't know any details about it, so I guess I'll see it here in a minute. I ran to Sonic again today for lunch, and this is the only thing I hate about here, is it is a nightmare to get out. And you always got to worry about semis turning in here and taking out the front clip of your car. It's happened a few times. There's always wrecks at this intersection. Probably the worst possible place they could have put this thing. I made it out here, and boy did I get lucky. My tripod was still sitting there. I think Skyler's backing in now with that truck. As soon as he gets here, I don't want to bend the drive shaft because I think somebody might want the whole truck if it does in fact run, so they can use it in parades. I've got this hill back here, so I think if I just back him down there to where his trailer's heading down that hill with the back tires, we put his ramp down, or his ramps I mean, and we can just roll the truck right off his trailer right out into the field, and then I can pick up the front of it with the loader and wheel it around later. I don't want to get the loader out right now because i got to get back to the other yard. It didn't roll off there quite as good as I thought. He actually had to drive out from underneath it a little bit. It started rolling off good, but I think I should have had him pull forward a little bit further because these rear wheels started going uphill again right here and it didn't work. But we got it. It's got some pretty cool doors on it. It says, I don't know if this is HD or what it is. I can't tell what the brand is, but it's Devore Ranch from Cassidy, Kansas. I really wish that was better writing. Or more visible still because I think that would be really really cool that would probably make these doors worth you know 100 150 bucks a piece for wall art but here's the interior it's got a little bit of a rat nest in it but it does have pretty clean gauge gauges in it it's got the radio delete it's got all the chrome on the dash typical ashtray on these things always missing the cover that's a really common deal on these then it's got a good glove box door it's got a good rear view mirror that's a good piece. The uh, sun visor is gone, unfortunately. But it's got a good steering wheel. That'll sell. The cab itself is pretty rough. You can kind of see back here. It looks pretty bad, but on the outside it looks really bad from this headboard. This headache rack smacking it. I can't really... You can see there, it's, it's pretty rough. So I don't think anybody will want this cab, although the floors are rock solid in it, so I don't... I don't know, you gotta pick your poison. It's not rotted out up there either. These old trucks, it always seems like they'll have a perfect roof on them and then the floors will be rotted out or they'll be like this in here where the floors are rock solid, cab corners are good, and then the back of the cab is all beat up. So I don't know, I'll try to sell it before I cut it up, but I know nobody will want the whole truck. It's just too far gone. Got a big old crunch here in the fender, so we'll cut this nose off for a wall hanger. 
I had a guy get really, really, really upset with me the other day about what I do to these old trucks and old cars. But like I told him, I said, look, if I can cut something up and crush it for $2,000, I'd probably try to sell that exact same vehicle for somewhere in the $1,200 to $1,500 range. So I'm losing $500 to $800 just to try to save the vehicle so you can't really get mad at me and say I'm too high on my prices because I have guaranteed buyers for that stuff it's not like I'm just blowing smoke I mean I have people that actually do buy my wall art so it's not like I'm just threatening and making f false promises Let's see it's got a v8 flathead in it and he said that it was running about a year and a half ago they were running and driving they were driving this truck around it still turns good and it looks pretty clean. Looks like some of the spark plug wires got eaten. So I'll have to put some new ones of those on it. But we'll try to get this one running. I won't. I'm not a mechanic. But I'll try to have Sean or somebody else get it running. So most likely the plan for this truck here is, is chop the nose. Scrap the radiator. Sell the engine. Maybe sell the complete cab. If the complete cab is too far gone for people to be interested in. Then we'll go ahead and pull the doors off. And cut the back of the cab off. And strip the dash out of it and a few other parts. That cab's just kind of right on the borderline to where I'm thinking it'll bring quite a bit more money and sell easier if we cut it into pieces than if I try to sell it whole. But like I say, I'll give it one shot. I always give those cabs one shot. If for some reason somebody watching this does want the whole truck like it sits, I would probably take like $1,500 for the whole thing. And that's a whole lot less than I'll get chopping it up. But it is what it is. I'll just throw it out there. No pressure. If nobody wants to buy it, that's okay with me. I actually enjoy running the torch. It's therapeutic. All right, we got that taken care of back there. I'm headed up here now. They're coming to get that Art Deco couch tomorrow. So while I got a few minutes to spare right now, I'm gonna go ahead and go in there and finish getting it out. You guys may remember I went and started digging it out, but I never finished. So I just gotta move that big pile of boxes and that horse trough that's full of old stuff out of that building. And I'm actually gonna drag it out to where I can get to it. There we go. That's quite a bit of work to do by yourself. That thing's made out of real wood. That's some thick stuff. Luckily I had this little cart and I was able to tip the couch forward, slide that underneath it, then wheel it out to here, and then I just kind of tip the couch forward again and slid this over to one side. That way there's a gap between the floor and the couch. So tomorrow now when they get here, I can just run in here with the skid steer. And I got those boxes on the forks now. I'll slide those out of the way. Then I can pick the couch right up and carry it out closer to the truck. Welcome back, guys. We're back again today. Yesterday I wasn't paying attention to the time, and I looked and I said, oh man, I've got a haircut tonight. So I didn't have time to close it out or nothing. I just took off, ran home, jumped in the shower, and then ran to my haircut appointment. I feel naked. I haven't gotten a haircut in two months. My hair was getting pretty long. Back of my neck's pretty cold now. It's not even cold today. I don't even have to wear a coat, but it's still cold enough on the back of my neck that's a little bit uncomfortable, but it'll only take a day or two to get used to it. At least it's not five degrees outside or something like that. But today's agenda is, is I got a bunch going on out of my place again. But right now it's pretty early in the morning. I don't have anything else going on. So I'm here cleaning wheels again. And you may notice I'm wearing my power beats. That's so I can keep on working and if somebody calls me, I can just answer and talk to them on here and I don't have to stop what I'm doing because it drives me up a wall when I'm trying to hurry and hustle and people keep calling me and I've had a lot of phone calls this week on stuff. So this way I can talk and work at the same time. Speaking of that, that's enough talking. Let's get to work. And there we go, got quite a few more of them cleaned. I got a few more right here in the pile that I threw down yesterday that are kind of landed up in the pile still. So I gotta get those out. And I'll start on these here, but I've got help coming Monday. Jason's gonna come back and help me for a day or two. That'll go a little bit faster when we got two people on this. And that's gonna be my job all day Monday is to just focus on wheels. Wheels, wheels, and more wheels. We'll set truck beds in here, start stacking these in truck beds, take them out there, dump them in the dumpster, all that good stuff. But for now, I've got to head back out to my place. I've got a guy bringing in a load of catalytic converters. And then I've got another guy coming to get that old Art Deco couch. And then I've got some other people coming out as well. So I better get out there. It is getting windy and it's starting to rain out there. I don't know where all this is coming from, but that's okay. Got a guy here now with some catalytic converters. And he wants to buy all those old buggy seats from that farm cleanup we did a while back. 
So we're gonna get all that taken care of. Sold a whole bunch of neat stuff to him. He's gonna take all that to a swap meet or an antique show or something like that. All those chicken feeders and buggy seats, windmill fin, all sorts of neat stuff. It is getting crazy windy out there. I'm having to sit in the skid steer with my back against the wind just to be able to record. But that north wind is blowing in and the temperature is dropping fast and I realized I don't have a clue where my coat's at. I took it off yesterday and I don't know where I put it. It's not in the truck. And I know it's not at home because I took it off while I was at work. So I want to go out back and see if I left it out there. Maybe I put it in the loader. Maybe it's in the other yard. Still, I don't I don't know. I guess we'll go try to find it. But they're going to be here in about 30 minutes for that couch. So I set it out. You can't really see it. It's all blurry. But they'll be here soon. But just check out the styling on this thing. Just beautiful. It would be awesome to see this thing restored. It's got all that intricate designs in it. This is a work of art, man. It's still a work of art. But boy, when this thing was new, I bet it was fancy. Really cool. So I hopped in my truck, started going through my old videos, trying to see where I took my coat off exactly. And I noticed right in the middle of that first time lapse I did when I first started working on those aluminum wheels, about halfway through, I took my coat off and laid it on a car back behind. So now I know where it's at. Unfortunately, I can't go get it right now. I'm waiting on them to show up on that couch. So as soon as I get that taken care of, I'll go back and get it. It's the weirdest thing, sitting in here now with that sun coming in on me from this direction. Now I messed my camera up just a second. There we go, got that fixed. But as the sun's coming in on me, it's nice and warm in here. Out of the wind, there's no way no way I could wear a coat in here. I'd be cooking. But as soon as I step out of that door, I'm going to freeze again. Because that north wind is getting pretty chilly. It's supposed to cool down tomorrow and Sunday be cold. And then Monday and Tuesday is supposed to get up almost to 70 degrees. And then Wednesday be warm in the morning and then cool off at night. And then it's supposed to snow. <laughs> just roller coaster weather that's the that's the thing about when you're here in the middle of the country is you don't get the worst of the worst but you get some of everything you get some of the snow coming down from up north you get some of the heat coming up from down south in the summertime we'll have some days where it's just absolutely beautiful and other days where it's 110 degrees so you just up and down like a roller coaster year round that's okay though i'd i'd rather have that to where i can experience a little bit of everything all throughout the year rather than have a place that's cold for half the year or hot for half the year I mean, some people like it now. I am jealous of the people that live down in Florida, where it's just always beautiful. A little bit of humidity, got to deal with hurricanes every now and then. A few crazy people. Florida, man, he always strikes somewhere. But other than that, sometimes it would be nice to live in Florida. But Kansas is where I was born, and unless God has other plans, this is probably where I'll stay. I like it here, and I don't have any true desire to move. Sometimes I think about it, but no true desire to move. I, I like it here. Well, it's starting to warm back up out here. I never did get to leave and go get my coat, so I need to do that at some point. But my dad just brought out another load of these old things. These racks, and this is what they actually look like when they're by themselves. It's like this right here, when they're all separated. The welder that's up there in the building that works for the guy that rents this place, he said he can weld these together to where they don't slide back and forth. That way they'll be nice and secure. Then I can take all those old trucks that I cut the cabs off of, and I can put them up in the air on these and old cars and stuff like that and I want to get three of these made for the other yard so I can drain the gas and oil and that sort of stuff. I don't I do not do a whole lot of that out here. I do drain some fluids but I don't do a whole lot of crushing out here so that's not really an issue here. But I can put the old cars up in the air to where I can get underneath them to cut stuff off of them, cut the cabs off the old trucks rather than lay on the ground because this ground out here is just covered in stickers. Up here isn't too bad but out back it's just lots of stickers and that's never fun. So this way put them up in the air and then I can just climb right through here and I can just stand there and I'll have to hunch down a little bit, but not too bad. And get them cut up and no sand in the ears, no sparks raining down in the ears, none of that sort of stuff. Just got a junk Crown Vic in. It's pretty tore up. It's had a rough life and even the frame is rotted out on it. I don't know what that's all about. The rest of the car barely has any rust in it, but the, the front frame sections are completely rotted out. So it's not good for anything. I'm going to take it back here. I got to process it later and I'll probably haul it into the shredder. Maybe, well, probably not Monday, maybe Wednesday. I don't know, we'll just kind of see how next week goes. And we got to do aluminum wheels first part of the week. Then after those are done, I'm going to haul some loads in. I just got my truck back, finally, again. Everything's fixed on it again now. So hopefully it'll last a little while this time at least. I know I said I was going to be shipping stuff out east on flatbed trailers. But the problem is, is I can't get to my crusher to crush cars right now. We've got so many cars coming in, it's unreal again. And my dad's been busy with the factory cleanup, so he's been busy with that. And he hasn't had time to crush any cars, so I'm probably going to have to sell a few loads locally to the claw and I hate doing that for less money but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to make room. I'm probably going to get rid of two loads out of here of stuff that came in that I don't want to mess with. I don't want to put it in the pile. I just want to 
get it out of here. I don't want to make the pile any bigger than I already did unless I have to. And then I probably want to haul that tanker truck in at the other yard and I've got probably 15 or 20 cars I need to haul in to make some room to be able to crush cars again. Whew, man, it got busy there for a minute. It was just non-stop back to back to back to back to back with people bringing stuff in at the very end of the day. I didn't buy hardly anything today until the last hour of the day. Everybody needed that weekend money. Got a junk Crown Vic. Got this junk Corsica. Got my trailer hitch laying here. I dropped it off the loader. Grab that. Another guy drove out an old Focus. I say an old Focus, 2008. Runs and drives, but it's a piece of junk like most Focuses are. Throw this up here on my trailer so I can hook it up on Monday. Well, actually, I probably won't be back Monday, but maybe Tuesday. And then I bought probably 25 catalytic converters. I bought quite a bit of stuff. It was just crazy there for a minute. I had a line of people lined up. I actually ran out of checks to pay people, so I had to have my dad bring me more. It was unexpected rush of people. I'll just put it that way. And then I bought one other thing that is so cool. Like, I don't even know how to describe to you how cool this thing I bought is. And not only that, but what's inside the car is way cooler than even the car or what engines in the car. I mean, it's it's definitely the buy of the year so far. The best thing I've bought all year. I paid, it's the most expensive thing I've bought all year. I paid more for this car than I've paid for any other car so far, but it was well worth the money. That's gonna be a separate video though. This is just a teaser. You're gonna wanna wait and see that video for sure. It is gonna be another banger, I think. I think it's gonna be pretty cool, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. No details are gonna be given. If you follow me on my personal page, please don't give away the secret on here. Keep it a secret for everybody. I had to run in here real quick. I sold a carburetor on eBay. What the deal was is I had two carburetors that were almost identical, just a tiny bit different. And I was in a hurry and it was late. So I just came in here and I grabbed it and I threw it in there and it was the wrong one. And it was my own fault. I should have double checked to make sure it was the right one. And I, I did. I mean, they look the same. Just the only difference is is that one of them had the little spigot in it and one of them didn't. And I should have made sure that I grabbed the right one, but I didn't. So I gotta take this home, get it packaged up, get it sent out, that way he'll be happy. I sold the carburetor, I think for $25 plus shipping. And I just broke even on the shipping. So I'm gonna send this. It's probably gonna cost about, about $13 to ship this. So I'm gonna make $12 for two carburetors at six bucks a piece is all I'm gonna make on the deal. But it's better than losing money. I have lost money so many times on eBay in the past for just dumb things happening. Sometimes it was my fault. Sometimes it was somebody else's fault. But it's always me that gets to eat the loss. But it's okay. It's the name of the game when you do eBay. Back when I was doing eBay full-time, I just counted on. I was self-insured for the most part. And I counted on losing about $200 a month. Just to whatever, whatever the reason was. Whether it was a mistake I made. And I had it down to a pretty good system when I was doing it full-time. To where I usually didn't make mistakes. But... One time the post office sent my box to the wrong address and that address had pit bowls that completely shredded the box and ate half the contents. And then he took it over to his neighbors like, oh, hey, I think this was yours and gives it to him. He's like, yeah, that was mine. And so he was all mad at me as if it was my fault that the post office did something wrong. And so I had to refund him, just things like that. But it's okay. I don't do eBay that much anymore. Like I say, I mean, I, at least I made something. It doesn't really pay for my time. I would have made more money. More money sweeping the parking lot at McDonald's, but oh well, it's okay. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and go out back and grab my coat, but this box here is just clear full of more vintage car parts. I've got some very rare stuff in there I'll have to show you sometime. And then this box here is clear full of nothing but vintage license plates. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I have a guy that's been selling us a lot of scrap lately that needs a 1971 Reno County plate. Oh, and more carburetors. You guys have seen I have so many carburetors, but he needs a 71, and I think this is my 71 file. No, that's 69. Got 70, 68, 72. Well, 73, 74. Where's my 71 pile? Here they are. These are all in order up here. I got them and it goes from 70 to 72. And I'm like, what in the world's going on here? But the 71s are down here. I really don't have that many. This is the only Reno County one I have. It's a little bit dirty, but it'll clean up. It's not super rusty or anything, so that'll be a good one for him. I got some more there. That's even a low number one there, but that's Rice County, so that won't do him any good. What else do I got back here? Oh, a pile of catalytic converters I forgot I had. Those should have went out the other day. Oh, those are good ones there, too. There's a couple Duramax cats. Some Hondas and a Chrysler. Huh. What else we got in here? 
old heater, old heat lamp. Oh, I forgot I had these. Check these out. If I can get my camera here so I can light it up. I'll just take them out in the sun where you can see them. I don't know if you can read that. Lead free pewter. I got a whole thing clear full of pewter bars. Ow, that hurt. Mmm. Whew. Carburetor attacked me. Oh, that hurt. It fell right on top of me. That carburetor there is just scrap anyway. That wasn't even worth the pain. Here's one here I forgot we had in here too. I haven't even been back in this area for quite a while. Little old Taunus. I'll have to tell you a story about that car someday. Kind of a funny deal. We bought it, and then they sold everything to somebody else. And then years later, that person sold it to Mr. Goodpliers, and he sold it to us again. So we got to buy that one twice. Here's an old short bed 66 Dodge I bought. Pretty cool truck. I wish I would have been doing YouTube when I went and got this truck, because that guy had thousands of old cars lined up out in the fields. Probably 2,000 old cars. Really, really neat place. I'd like to go back one more time. He's in pretty bad health, though, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it. And there she be, right where I left her. On the back of this truck. Good old Carhartt. All right, guys, I'm going to head out for the day. I'm not going to quite close out the vlog yet, just because I want to come back on Monday for just a little bit so you can see me finish cleaning these wheels up and loading those in the dumpster. That way it can all be together. So I will see you guys in a couple days. And we're back. It is, in fact, today, actually Tuesday, not Monday. Uh, some of you may saw my post. I stayed home on Sunday with my sick daughter. And unfortunately, whatever she had, she gave it to me. So I was sick all day yesterday. Still not feeling real good, but there's work to be done. So I came out here so I can get something done. I'm not going to do a whole lot today. I just got to get these wheels done. Uh, as you know, I got a bunch of them ready to go already. I've got help on the way. And we're going to throw some more out of the pile, get those cleaned, and start throwing them in the box. Like I said, I'm not going to record a whole lot. I basically just want to show you guys the final product once we get the dumpster loaded. That way you can see what it looks like, and I'll let you know how many wheels we were able to get in the box. Here's the first batch of clean wheels. I think we got 76 wheels in this. And so what I'll do, I want to be able to do this two-handed so I don't drop the truck bed in the box. But I'll just take them and dump them over the side. I'm not sure how many we're going to get in here, but hopefully we can get about a thousand in here. That's what I'm hoping for. We'll see what happens, though. And there we go. It's loaded up full. Didn't get nearly as many in there as I thought we would, or hoped we would anyway. We used to get about a thousand in a dumpster. And I got to thinking that's because we actually took our time and stacked them in there nice and neat. And wedged them together and packed them in there tight. Whereas these here, we didn't do that. Because back in the day, we actually had to pay for the dumpsters to ship them wherever they were going. So we wanted to maximize it. But with this here, it's not really costing us that much money to have them set the dumpster. So it wasn't that big of a deal. I could probably get a few more in there if I wanted to, but it's extremely windy out there. You can't really tell here, but they've got wildfires all over the place, and it's windy and dusty and tearing my throat up, breathing all that dirt in. So I think we're just going to call it good on this one. But we got 620 wheels in there, so I'm not sure what that's going to come out to weight-wise. I'll let you guys know when I find out, but it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 to 12,000 pounds, I would guess. Uh, just assuming they weigh 18, 19 pounds a piece but I don't really know what these will average. There's a few old ones in there that may not average that much. So I'm gonna let you guys all go now. I got some cool stuff coming up. I bought a really cool car. I'm gonna make a video just about that car. I think you guys will like it. And then I believe Sean is coming out later this week, uh, as long as it doesn't snow, which they took most of the snow out of the forecast. It's just supposed to be really cold and windy. But assuming that's all that happens, we're gonna come out and we're gonna cut a bunch of noses off and cut some calves off. I know some of you guys don't like that, but that's what pays the bills, so that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm not sure what else is going on this week, but there's just all sorts of potential things that could happen this week, and I got some people coming to buy some cars. So I don't know what else I'm gonna film this week, but I guess we'll all find out together. If you enjoy this one, please leave me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.